So to enable persistent storage in our notes app, we're going to use PouchDB, a lightweight JavaScript database library that runs in the browser or on Node.js. And it stores all data locally and offline using the database tools built into modern browsers. It does have some functionality that allows it to synchronize with a remote CouchDB server, but we won't be covering that here. PouchDB supports various ways to interact with its APIs, including plain old callbacks and more modern promises. However, since we're using Babel and browsers released in the past six months, we can also use async functions, which can turn a jumble of nested promises and boilerplate into much simpler and much easier to read imperative looking code. Under the hood, the browser still uses promises to delay execution of the code, but with async, it allows the developer to write code that's much easier to read and importantly, easier to test as functions can still be broken down into smaller chunks. So let's start by making sure that PatchDB is installed and up to date with npm install. And back in our editor, we'll create a new file and we'll call it db. Now this file is going to contain a class called db and it will manage our PouchDB database and abstract all the functionality that we need from PouchDB into small functions that we can apply throughout the rest of our app. So we'll first import PouchDB and we'll create a new class called db. First thing we need to do is create a constructor and in there we'll create our db object. Now the first function we need to create is a way to get all of the notes out of our database and return them to us. And since we're using the async API with pouch, the function name in our database must be prefixed with the keyword async. This will inform JavaScript that the function is going to be asynchronous and will automatically wrap it with the required promise functionality behind the scenes. So first we'll query our pouch TB and this will be an asynchronous function. So we will await a response from this.db.alldocs and we'll pass it an object with the property of include docs as true, so that when this query returns, it will include all of the data from our database instead of whether or not the documents exist. Now, if we look back at our main application.js file, you'll see that our notes data structure is an object with the key as the notes ID and the values are the notes themselves. So when we get all of our notes, we need to return a data structure that looks like that. So we'll create an empty notes object and we'll return it. So now we need to iterate through all of the documents that PouchDB gave back to us and extract the notes themselves and their IDs and create this notes object. And we'll get the rows array out of the PouchDB response. And we'll use for each to iterate through those. Right, each item is a note. And we'll update our notes object with the ID and the document within the PouchDB response. Now we can go back to our app file and start implementing our database. We'll first import DB. and we'll add it to our state. We can now clear out the test notes that we hard coded in. And now we need to call our get all notes function. So we'll implement a react lifecycle method called component did mount. This too will be async because our get all notes function is async. So the whole chain up has to match and understand that async functions will be happening all the way down. And we'll await the response and get all notes. Now, since we have await right here, the function will effectively pause until the async function has resolved. 
So any code that we write after this will have access to the object returned by get all notes. So now we can simply update the state with our new op notes object. Now back in the browser, we can see that we now have no notes because our database is currently empty. So let's implement the next feature that we need, that is creating new notes and saving them. To get that to work, we'll add a new function to our DB class. It will be async, and we'll call it create note. It will receive a note object. We'll set a created at and updated at fields. And we'll use the post function within pouchdb, and that'll return uh, an object which contains the ID of our note. So it too will use await. And we'll give it a destructured copy of the note that was sent to us. Now we can return that response. And that's all we need to add there. So now we need to update the handle save function in our main app file. We can replace all of the code which gave us our hard coded IDs with a call to our create note function and add the async keyword to our handle save function. And then we can extract the ID that was given to us. Well, we can actually simplify this further by replacing res with the ID because we don't need the other information that was returned from create note. So we can go over to our new note class now and inform handle save that our on save function is asynchronous with async and await. And that's all we need to do. So going back to our browser in the new note page, we can create a new note here and we can save it. And it takes us to the note show page. So now instead of having an integer ID, we now get this UUID. And going back to the home page, the note shows up. And if we refresh the page, the note remains. So now we need to implement editing and deleting notes.